here are 10 not so obvious tips and tricks for working faster and smarter in iMovie. Unlike Final Cut Pro, iMovie has no obvious way to set the resolution and frame rate of your project. Whether you want 1080p at 30 frames per second or 4K at 24 frames per second, iMovie sets your project's resolution and frame rate based on the first clip you place on the timeline. Rather than hunt around for the right clip to use as your first clip, you can make a blank or dummy clip to set up your iMovie project. You can create your dummy clip in Apple Keynote at the resolution, aspect ratio, and frame rate that you want. Then export it as a video, then import that video into iMovie and place it on the timeline as your first clip. I have a tutorial that explains how to do it. Link in the description. When I select a clip in the timeline and go up to the top of the preview window to the toolbar, there's this little eye icon here at the end. The eye stands for information, and if I click on it, I get information about the selected clip, its name, and how long it is, its duration. This selected clip, for example, is 13 seconds long. But here's the cool part. This duration field is editable, meaning I can enter in a different duration for this clip. I'll enter in 5 seconds. Now watch what happens to the clip in the timeline when I hit return. It sets itself to the duration I put in the box. But there's more. You can set the duration of multiple clips on the timeline at the same time. You just select the clips you want to change, then go up and open the info panel, enter in the duration, hit return, and that new duration is applied to all of the selected clips. This is a really handy trick for editing montages or music videos. Bear in mind, you can't make a clip longer than its original footage. Here's a trick you usually only find in higher-end pro-level editing software, and that's the ability to shuttle through your footage. Now, we all know how to scrub through our footage in iMovie using the scrubber bar. It's great for getting somewhere on the timeline fast, but it's tricky to review your footage carefully, especially when you're trying to locate a specific spot in a clip. That's where shuttling comes in. Tapping the L key on your keyboard plays the clip forward at normal speed. Tap it again, and it plays faster. Again, faster still. Tapping the K key on your keyboard pauses playback. Tapping the J key on your keyboard starts playing backwards through the clip at normal speed. Tap the J key again, and it plays backwards faster, and so on. Again, tapping the K key pauses. The next trick is a real time saver. I have this clip on the timeline, and it's loaded with all kinds of effects and animations. So let's say I want to add all these same effects and animations to another clip. Well, rather than redo everything from scratch, which would take a lot of time, I can simply select the clip with the effects and animations, hit Command C to copy it, then select the clip I want to add the effects and animations to, go up to the top menu and select Edit, Paste Adjustments, All. And all of those effects and animations are pasted to the target clip. You can even paste adjustments to multiple clips in the timeline. Now here's a fast way to throw together a rough edit in iMovie. I have a bunch of clips in the media browser. For demonstration purposes, each clip is numbered. Holding down the command key on my keyboard, I'll select each clip in the order that I want it to appear in my edit. Once the clips are all selected, I'll hit the E key on my keyboard, and iMovie places the clips on the timeline in the order I selected them. Then I can just jump in and start fine-tuning my edit. Ever been in this situation? You want to apply a fade in or a fade out to a clip using those little fade handles, but you want the fade in and the fade out to be different durations. But when you click and drag on the fade handles, the fade in and the fade out are the same duration. What do you do? Hold down the Option key on your keyboard, then drag a fade handle. That fade handle will move independently of the other fade handle. So you can create a fade in and a fade out at different durations. 
iMovie actually has keyframe animation, but only when you're using an overlay clip in picture-in-picture -picture mode. It's bare bones, but functional. But what makes it really challenging to use is the lack of visual confirmation while you're animating. The only way you know you're on or near a keyframe is through this tiny interface in the preview window. There's absolutely no indication of where a keyframe is on the timeline, which is where you really need to see what's going on. It really makes it difficult to keep track of what you're doing, which is where this next little trick comes in. After adding a keyframe in the preview window, hit the M key on your keyboard to mark where that keyframe is on the timeline. Now you have a visual representation of how your keyframes relate to each other, which makes it way easier to animate. Controlling your audio is vital to making good video, particularly when it comes to mixing together your sync sound, voiceover, music, and sound effects. iMovie gives you the ability to precisely control the level or loudness of your different audio clips using keyframes. But manually placing keyframes to raise and lower sound levels can be a time-consuming process, especially if you have a lot of audio clips to adjust. Here's a little trick to speed up that entire process. Scrub to the beginning of where you want to start adjusting your audio clip. Then hold down the R key on your keyboard to activate the Range Selection tool. Then click and drag out a selection over the portion of the clip you want to adjust. Then click and drag on the audio band inside the selection to raise or lower the sound level. iMovie automatically places four keyframes at the optimal locations for a smooth fade down or fade up. No doubt you found yourself in a situation in iMovie where you've had to try and sync an audio clip with a video clip. Clicking and dragging on the audio clip, trying to get it in place, can get it done, but it can take some trial and error. Selecting the clip, then holding down the Option key on your keyboard, then tapping the left bracket key, that's the key next to the M key on your keyboard, nudges the clip to the left one frame at a time, making it easier to line things up. However, you can only nudge a clip to the left, not to the right. Don't ask me why. So best to drag the clip to the right past the sync point and work your way back to the left. While we're on the topic of nudging clips, this little trick is really useful when you need to be very precise with an edit. Click on the in point of a clip or the out point of a clip to select it. Then tap the left bracket key on your keyboard to trim one frame to the left or tap the right bracket key to trim one frame to the right. This is really useful for making smooth-looking, professional continuity edits.